Hey guys, hope you're having a good day. So today we're gonna get into this Weed Eater GTI 19. See what it needs to get going again. It's kind of one of those combination brush cutter weed whacker units. And I had gotten it from a guy doing an estate clean out along with some other older pieces of equipment you'll probably see here in the future, but he didn't know anything about it. So that means I don't know anything about it. So let's get you guys set up. We'll do some initial checks and we'll go from there. Okay, well, first off, I think I'm gonna pull on this thing to see if we at least have decent compression before we uh, flip this upside down, pull out that spark plug, and I think I'm gonna put some fuel mix directly into the cylinder. But I noticed that we still have an intact fuel line, which is kind of a rarity around here. So let's check the fuel, see if there's any in there. Yeah, there's some in there. So I'll have to grab a picture for you guys before I go to drain it. But let's pull on this thing. Well, it seems like it has compression. The recoil is a little slow to return, but let's keep going. Looks like an old champion CJ14. Looks okay. All right, so we're tight again. Let's see if we can get this thing to pop off. So this is the on switch here. That's good enough for me let's get this thing inside let's actually drain that fuel first i don't want to be spilling that inside this is probably going to be really nasty oh, yeah i'd say that's past its date All right, let's keep going. Okay, so since we're gonna probably have to deal with this recoil, maybe lubricated or something, I'm gonna try to slide the shaft out of this power head. And there's two screws here. I'm using a T25, but they're actually a hex head. And I should be able to loosen them up and then slide the shaft out. At least that's what I'm hoping. Okay, so a closer look at this thing. Almost guaranteed we're gonna have to go through the carb because of that gas. That didn't really have great color, but sometimes people actually use just regular motor oil, which doesn't have the blue or the green tint in it. So it's possible that was still mixed gas, but it did start up. So I'm not really too concerned about that. And uh, we'll have to do the recoil as well. Um, there's a serial number. I don't know if you guys are good with decoding that. My guess is this is probably mid a mid-90s machine, but let's pop this intake cover off and see what we got for a carb at least first. I'm using another T25 here. And I don't know if you guys noticed with moving this around, the handle and the gas tank are one piece, and it's actually got some vibration dampening, like springs on the backside here, and then like a rubber piece on the front of the handle. Thought that was pretty cool. That's an interesting design. It's actually just a C shape, and this is probably going to vaporize when I pull this off. Yeah. Okay, here's a closer look at that fuel line. 
and it looks like it's got almost solidified fuel inside the line. So this carb should be interesting. I was surprised that the fuel filter was still attached to the line inside. So I wouldn't be surprised if the guy was still using this fairly recently, maybe not within the last five years, but with the fuel line still being attached, that's what I would guess. Got here. I'm just going to cut that. Okay, closer look here. Wall, bro. WA199. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. We'll get you a better close up to start going through this carb. And I'll have to be careful because this started leaking gas on me. Okay, any guesses how bad this will be? Start with the uh, pumping side. Not bad at all. I really don't even see any dirt in the screen. Maybe some in the corner here. Let me put that back on so I don't put more dirt in there. Because I'll have to probably look up the kit here for the other side. Okay, we're a little wrinkly. Oh yeah, we're hard. Hard as a rock. So that's not gonna pump anything or meter anything. Let's see what's underneath here. That's really clean too. Needle looks like it moves. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the metering diaphragm. And it's supposed to be nice and soft for it to work correctly. You can hear it crunching. So that'll need to be replaced. I'll have to look up what the kit is. If not, maybe I can just replace the metering diaphragm. I might, I have some of the, uh, the Walbro versions of that, but I have to look that up and take a look. So I'll bring you back after I do that. All right, well, it's a new day and I got that carburetor kind of moved out of the way, uh, but I was able to look up the part uh, numbers for the, the rebuild kit and the gasket diaphragm. It's K10WAT and D10WAT for the gasket diaphragm. So before I go and see if I have that in my stash or have to order it, I kind of want to go through this recoil first to make sure that nothing's broken in here that we need to order. And if you're familiar with the weed eater pool and design, uh, the recoil is actually inside a cup area in this middle plastic section. So that means that we've got to take this clutch cover off, got to take this front bolt of the handle off to get to this one, take that off, and then the recoil is on the back side. So... That's what we'll need to do to get to that, to, to lubricate that a little bit and free that up so it returns easy. And uh, I'm kind of curious if we take this bolt out, if the tank will just slide off, because that'll be a lot easier for me to 
take this outside and clean it, and get all the old gas out of it if it's separated from this power head. So we've got to start first with these three bolts here and the handle bolt. We'll probably have to get the piston stop out and uh, use that to be able to take the, the spin the clutch off. So I guess let's get into it. So this uh, handle bolts got a head on one side and then a kind of a captured nut on the other side. It's actually an Allen driver, but I'm going to use a T25 that fits in there pretty good. Yeah, whole thing just slides out. But we're stuck with the uh, the throttle cable still bolted on, so I might have to unbolt that to remove it. Get that out of the way. Get you a better look right here. There we go. So it's like two posts slide into these springs. I was almost expecting it to be some bolts from the backside here, but I guess it's just these screws holding the uh, the springs to the plastic here. All right, back to this side. Okay, so this should expose the clutch, as far as I know. Missing something? Does it need a tap? No. Oh, I missed one. <laughs> uh, let me show you. It's kind of hidden in there. Right there. Clutch drum came off with that. Looks like it's maybe part of this housing. I'll have to clean the bugs out of there. All right, that looks like my clutch removal tool will fit. It's actually bolted on. Let's get that piston stop in first. Might be able to just spin that off. Let's see. All right, let's stop that there. Let me get a socket for that. It says off this way. Curious if this is reverse thread or not. Hopefully we don't break it here. reverse so it's got a warning there I don't know if you can read that see owner's manual for proper clutch removal do not use air wrench <laughs> so I guess impact is probably not a good method for removing this nut. Okay, so I didn't read. <laughs> they want us to hold these flats to turn the nut off. So let's try that with an adjustable. It's turning. Pretty awkward to hold on to. Oh, the clutch is, clutch is keyed, so we didn't need the piston stop at all. Oh, 
Ooh, did they help us out? Well, let's come off here. Yeah, nice. Okay, so we didn't have to take this this middle one off. That's good. They actually had this as a separate piece just sandwiched in there. Yeah, so it's catching on its way back in, which is what we were seeing. Kind of an interesting way to capture this rope here. So they got it coming up through a hole around this cog and then underneath that rope that came up through the hole back around and then they screw it down. Let's try taking this retainer out first. So the spring looks in pretty good shape. It's not rusted. I expected it to be rusted. Okay, let me clean this up and I'll bring you back. Okay, back from cleaning this thing up, I degreased it a little bit and shot some WD on the spring. I'm hoping I don't have to take this out to actually clean it and it's in pretty good shape. It's not rusted or anything. So I think we'll be in good shape there. And I did cut the handle off of the string so I didn't soak that with degreaser. So we'll get this back in here and wound back up. I'm kind of thinking that maybe this was just not wound up enough to begin with. Let's find that hole for the string right there. I think that's about as far as I want to go with it. Let's see where we're at tension wise. <laughs> I was worried about that. Still kind of loose. Okay, let's go a little more. Yeah, I think that was three or four more turns. Okay, that should work. Let's get this handle back on. Okay, so unfortunate event, but that kind of happens. I didn't have the uh, the retainer in to hold the drum in the recoil, and it kind of torqued out, and then the spring went everywhere. So I took this as an opportunity, I guess, to clean out that cup a little bit better and, and wipe down the spring. So I got to recoil this and fit that back in there, and the way I do that is kind of tighten it here like that, loop it back around, and slowly do that until it'll fit back in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll bring you back when it's back in. Okay, back a couple steps, but we're recoiled again. I kind of had to use two hands with the table here 
get it as small as possible, hold that hook side with two fingers and hold the other side with two fingers and drop it in. Kind of a pain, not a great design here, but we're back to recoiling this again. And hopefully we won't have a repeat of what just happened. <laughs> All right, so this hole here goes around that point there. We'll get that rope in that little notch there so we can wind it up without taking the, the handle off again. Let's go one more. And we'll let it go. Actually, I think that's the end of the spring. So we'll let it off that one. Okay. Of course, the rope got all tangled up. This has enough tension on it. All right, that's good. Let's get that retainer in there so this doesn't fly off again. <laughs> Jeez, man. Okay. All right. It's pretty good. Let's lube up these paws real quick. Don't want those to get stuck open. Okay, that should be good. Okay. Okay, clutch. and stop take it out of there right. nice to hold that okay it's about as tight as I want to go with that these bugs onto the floor here. Okay. I think we're in good shape there. the tank. I'm going to take this outside and clean it, but I figured we'd take the, uh, the lines out first and let you guys see what the filter looks like. So we're going to need a new one of those. It's got some bad gas on it for sure. Okay, well, I'm going to go clean this thing off outside because it stinks. And uh, I guess the next thing we'll do is the carb.
All right, well, we're back inside after cleaning up this tank slash handle, and it turned out pretty well, I think. Let me show you. Hopefully it comes through. So, cleaned up pretty nice. Shouldn't have any issues with old gas or debris in there anymore. And we'll get to doing the lines and the filter on that in a second, but I did do a quick wipe down on that power head and some other parts while I was out there cleaning that tank. So let me hit you with some part numbers quick. So like I said before, the repair carb kit was K10WAT and the gasket diaphragm was D10WAT. I went with the K10WAT kit mainly because I already had it on hand, but there's also another reason that we'll get to when I go through the carb. The fuel filter is 53009546, and the fuel line takes that really thin one, which is 80 thousandths by 140 thousandths. And then the air filter is 53002730. Um, everywhere I saw online wanted somewhere between 10 and 15 bucks, so I'm gonna try some foam that I already have. It should be able to cut to length on that one and fit in that housing, so. These are the part numbers if you want to pause and grab ones that you need if you guys have one of these machines. But we'll keep going. Okay, fuel line, fuel filter. If you've never done one of these, uh, what I do is I cut kind of a needle point on the end of the line and then feed it into the hole far enough that I can grab it from the fuel fill, pull it back through, terminate the filter, and then pull it back through the tank until there's enough line in here that the filter is laying on the bottom of the tank. You don't want it sticking straight up and have your trimmer run out of fuel when there's half a tank still left in there. So that's why we kind of make sure it's laying on the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do here. Usually there's two lines. This carburetor and tank only has one. My guess is just an older design. You cut a nice bevel there or a needle point. And this usually takes a while. Okay. So we're right there. I don't know if you can see that. So I'm just going to grab that, pull it through. Cut that needle point off. And then terminate this, and this is usually pretty difficult on these thinner lines. So just take your time. All right. That took me a while, but it's over the barb now. So I'm gonna just pull this back through. Just make sure that the filter's laying on the bottom there. All right, I think we're good now. Kind of see it'll be laying on the front corner here, which is kind of natural for how you're using it. And we'll leave this long for right now, get that carb set up. All right, so uh, here's that K10 WAT kit. It's just a no-name brand from Amazon. I think I got like a multi-pack of them. But the reason why I went with the rebuild kit or the repair kit is you can see, or hopefully you guys can see, on that rocker arm there's an indent. So that's where the tip of this was wearing into that rocker arm over time. So that's kind of the indication of when to get a repair kit versus just a gasket diaphragm. A lot of times I open these up and everything's fine. Rocker arm's in good shape. You don't need to do anything there. So I would just go with a, a gasket diaphragm kit. But in this instance, we would need to replace that rocker arm with the new one in the kit. And you can hopefully see it there that it's nice and smooth like the way it's supposed to. So. That's the reasoning there. So I'm gonna get 
this blown apart, get all the gaskets scraped off of there, make sure all the passages are cleaned out, and then we'll get to putting the kit in. All right, so getting back on this, I got that carb cleaned and I got everything laid out. This is the old stuff that came out of the carb and this is the new stuff from the kit. And I figured I'd go over what I sprayed out just so you guys know in case you're working on one of these. So I sprayed through this port here and it'll eject out of the, the fuel port and there's only one on this, there's no return. And uh, I'll clean these passages out and then I'll spray out the screen because you want to make sure that that's flowing good. And the way to do that is putting fuel mix in here and then actuating the rocker arm on the other side and making sure that that will draw through. If yours is clogged, the repair kit already comes with one. So you would just kind of pick that out of there and then using the end of a drill bit, kind of seat that new one in there. And that would be your new screen. But since this one's clear, I'm not going to do that. And uh, one thing I wanted to note on the other side that's a little different than most of the ones I see is this one's got a, a circuit plate on it and underneath is a gasket. And typically I don't go that deep into it. I really only need to replace the metering diaphragms in these. But you guys that do more of these, let me know if I should be going that far and actually replacing that gasket. I'm not sure what else is in there other than maybe the passageways for the high and low circuits. But I figured we'd do this... Uh, the rocker arm on camera here, remove the screw and inspect the needle. Okay, just flathead screw, take that screw out. Get the rocker arm and the needle. There's a spring underneath the rocker, so make sure that doesn't fly everywhere. I usually just hold my thumb over it until I get the screw out. Spring. There's that damaged rocker arm. Probably reuse that pin. And trying to trying to see if that needle is deformed or not, and it kind of looks deformed. It's got kind of a gradual conical shape on it. Might be hard to see. Let me put let me put the new one up next to it. Let me clean that tip off a little bit better. All right. I think that's actually okay. So I'm gonna reuse that. Here you can really see the difference in the rocker arms. So let's see if I can get a good picture for you. It's not glared. Yeah. So this is the new one over here that we'll be using. All right, so this is the tricky part. Let's drop that needle in. that spring okay. okay slide that pin in there make sure that's moving free and then this is kind of the tricky part because you got to get you got to get that spring on the end of that cup while you're slipping the fork end on the needle. <laughs> so it might take a couple tries here. quite <laughs> all right 
right, second try. And I got it there. Okay. So that's moving good. Now, since we replaced that, we actually have to use the gauge here to make sure it's adjusted correctly. So this was a WA, and this is the mark for WA right here. So we'll put this across the, the carburetor and see if we need to adjust it, and it needs to be adjusted down. You can see it deflect in there. So, we bend on that. Still too tall. It's still deflecting a little bit. All right, I think that's it. So we got our new rocker adjusted correctly. Now we can move on to putting the kit in. Okay, so let's do the pumping side first. This kit actually came with a, a Teflon material pumping diaphragm. The black or the blue kind of plasticky one like this, I think is like an acetate or a mylar, but this should be just fine. I think this is actually better anyway. Make sure we get this on there right. This one always goes against the machine surface on this side. And the gasket goes on top of that. Find that screw. All right, that side's done. And just a quick double check on that. Yep, still good. And the, uh, on this side, the gasket always goes first, and then the metering diaphragm goes on top of that. Okay, I think that'll do it for the carb. Let's get that power head back over here. Okay, should probably start by getting that handle and tank back on first. Just slide those back in there. Throttle bracket needs to be screwed back on. How did this go? Like that. And the carburetor. So I wonder what this hook is for, if that's for maybe another setup or if the fuel line's supposed to go in there. I don't think it was in there to begin with. I 
gonna put that in there anyway. Let's cut that. That's good. Didn't really want to go on there the whole way. All right, then the choke plate. All right, I think that's good. So, the filter. I have this generic one. I think it was for a pool and design, but newer, like maybe 2000s. So I'm gonna cut this thing up and see if we can't kind of work that into here. So if you remember, it was like that C shape around here, around the top. And that looks to fit almost perfect. Awesome. So, trigger linkage is hooked up. It's working right. No primer or purge bulb on this one, so we're just going to have to throw some fuel in it and I guess pull on it a bunch of times to see if it'll work. But uh, before we go to slide the, the shaft back in, let's take a look at that, that bump feed or auto feed head. All right, so I'm not too familiar with this one. It's only a single line and it's called sensor feed. So I guess from what I've seen, this is supposed to automatically feed line out and trim itself. But I'm curious on kind of what it looks like inside. to unlock. There we go. Okay, so a lot of line left in there, so we don't need to re-spool that. So taking a look at this mechanism here, it's got this kind of piece of round stock or bar twisted around. I wonder if that's the uh, the kind of lock or release for it to feed more line out. So 080 line only. And when we put this spool back in, we're supposed to be putting that line around that rod and then out the hole. I guess that's how it advances. Okay. I guess that's it. We'll have to test it to see if it works. Okay. That's it. Let's see if we can't slide the shaft back in. Try 
trying to align that rod in there. All right, we are back together. So next step is to get some gas in this thing, get it back outside, but I'm gonna have to wait because it is pouring down rain right now. So I'll bring you back when we get some good weather to test it. All right, well, it's the next day and it's time to fuel this thing up. We got a little bit better weather. So I got some uh, 40 to one here. We'll put in, barely fits in there. So I couldn't help myself, I looked it up online and it looks like uh, I found an owner's manual from 1991 for this model. So that design is at least, what, 33 years old now? If my math is right. What I didn't find is what GTI means because it's actually trademarked on the back side of this. So if you guys know what that is, let me know, I'm curious on it. But we got fuel in here, so let's turn this on, crank it over, see if it'll start. We're gonna choke first. It's a good sign. line down quick because it's too long it's like auto feeding out too much okay let's try this again I got the business end opened up because it ran out of line and that's because while I was revving this thing it would constantly feed out line and be cutting it off and I think it's because maybe the wrong size line was used so you can see this one here was in it next to 080 which is next to it and I think this may be 095 and this is 080 which is what it called for so maybe the weight of this line was actually feeding it out too much and 
kind of messing with whatever engineered design they have here. So I'm going to re-spool this with the 080 and we're going to try this again. Okay. That should do it, hopefully. We're super windy today, so hopefully that's not hurting your guys' ears. All right, 080 in, let's try it again. Okay, let's see if this is any better, hopefully. All right, well, it threw the line again. Uh, I'm gonna try to set you up to where you can see what was happening, because um, I'm honestly not sure what's going on with that. It's just constantly feeding line and cutting it off. So maybe we need a, a new head, I'm not sure. So while I was re-spooling this, I kind of figured out how this is supposed to be working, and I figured I'd show you guys. So this rod that was in here that we routed the line around will have a certain amount of force on it the more length of line that's out of the head, which will push it towards this spool. So I almost think that maybe this spool is worn out and I need a new spool. Because if I pull on it, well now it's locking in. I don't know, maybe we fixed it. <laughs> maybe I didn't have this uh, rod in one of these grooves when I put it on previously. All right, let's try it again. All right, I'll have to point you guys at this thing this time. Okay, so I think I got you guys set up far enough away that you won't get hit, but uh, what you're gonna be looking at is right here and here, here's where the knife is on the guard. And what was happening as I revved it up, it would constantly feed out line and cut it against the guard, as you can see with all the debris on the ground here. So hopefully we just had maybe an installation error on my part getting it back together and it'll work fine this time. But if not, we'll have to maybe look into maybe a replacement spool or something because uh, maybe that's worn out. I'm not sure. But here we go. Yeah, so of course it works when you guys are actually looking at it, but yeah, maybe I just did not have that uh, rod notched into the spool correctly for it to lock and it kind of was just sliding around. So good that we have a working head now. All right, well, the grass isn't really growing too much because we're slowing down for winter here, but I figured I'd do a pass on this nonetheless. So here we go.
Okay, well with that, I think we're gonna end this one here. We got this thing running again and the line feed is actually working correctly now. So I must have had it maybe routed wrong or not against the spool from the very beginning there, but we got a good runner. I'll probably have to tune it a little bit better as I go because it's kind of cold out right now, but we pretty much hit every major category on this one to bring it back, which is awesome. You know, I, I bought this thing because I just thought it looked cool and it was really nice to be able to bring this one back. So hopefully what we covered helps somebody out or you guys found this entertaining. Thanks for joining me on this one and I'll catch you on the next one.